Ultra Street Fighter 4, the final version of the Street Fighter 4 series, is finally here. If you've been meaning to get into the Street Fighter scene, these videos will bring you up to speed and give you a fighting chance in the most popular competitive fighting game. Each character has six normal attack buttons, light punch, medium punch, and hard punch, and light kick, medium kick, and hard kick. The effect of pressing each of the six normal attack buttons changes depending on whether you are crouching, standing, or jumping. For standing normal attacks, the attack also often differs depending on whether you are standing close to or far away from your opponent. So standing normal attacks are often referred to as either standing far or standing close attacks. Crouching attacks, however, are always the same, regardless of your distance from the opponent. Jumping forward or backward is known as an angled jump, and each of the six attack buttons perform the same angled jump attacks whether you press them during a forward or a backward jump. Jumping straight upward is known as a neutral jump, and attacks performed during a neutral jump differ from those performed during an angled jump. Some characters also have what are known as unique normals, or command normals. These are executed by holding a single direction while pressing a normal attack button. Hitting your opponent with attacks, of course, deals damage. But be careful, because being hit while trying to execute an attack registers as a counter hit, which deals even more damage than a normal attack. Blocking in Street Fighter is performed by holding back, the direction facing away from your opponent. Simply holding back is known as a standing block, while holding down back is known as a crouching block. Most attacks can be blocked regardless of whether you choose to standing block or crouching block. However, high attacks, also known as overheads, must be blocked standing, while low attacks must be blocked crouching. All jumping attacks are considered overhead, and require a standing block to be defended against. Generally, all crouching kick attacks are considered low attacks. Additionally, there are certain special moves as well as standing normals that are considered low. The prevalence of low attacks often makes holding down back the go-to when you're on the defensive. Just be sure to keep an eye out for overheads and jump-ins. Blocking a normal attack deals no damage. Blocking a special attack, however, does deal a small amount of damage. This is known as chip damage. Some jumping attacks have the capability of hitting from behind. This is known as a cross-up. Cross-ups are a bit tricky because the direction required to block changes as your opponent crosses over you. Jumping angles and cross-up attacks vary from character to character, so you'll want to take some time to familiarize yourself with what each character can do. Throws play an important role, since they cannot be blocked. If an opponent is blocking most of your attacks, a throw will open them up and keep them guessing. To throw your opponent, simply press the light punch and light kick buttons simultaneously. Each character also has a backward throw. Though throws cannot be blocked, players can tech, or break throws, by pressing throw at roughly the same time that their opponent initiates a throw. It's important to note that the opponent must be in a neutral state in order to be thrown. You can't combo into throws, and you can't throw someone while they're blocking your attack. Finally, as you may have noticed, throws result in a knockdown, which is important because it puts the opponent at a significant positional disadvantage. There are two kinds of knockdowns, hard knockdown and soft knockdown. Throws and most crouching hard kicks, or sweeps, result in a hard knockdown, as do certain special moves. Soft knockdowns are normally only caused by special moves, though some normal attacks also cause them. The main difference between a hard and a soft knockdown is the effect that teching has on them. Teching a knockdown changes the duration that your character remains on the ground after being knocked off its feet. It's performed by hitting any two buttons just as your character lands on the ground. If performed correctly, you'll see the word technical on the side of the screen. 
Teching a hard knockdown causes your character to stay on the ground for even longer than they normally would. This is known as a delayed wake up. Teching a soft knockdown causes you to stand up faster than you normally would. This is known as a quick rise. Teching or not teching gives you a small variable to throw off your aggressor's momentum. All characters have the ability to dash, both forward and backward. To dash, simply tap forward forward or back back. Forward dashing is generally used offensively. It gives you a quick burst of speed and may catch your opponent off guard. Back dashes are useful defensively, since when initiated, they are momentarily airborne and invincible. This makes them useful as an escape. If your opponent is pressuring you after a knockdown, Backdashing when you stand up may get you out to safety. Backdashing is vulnerable upon completion though, so don't get too predictable. Each character has their own set of special attacks, which are performed by combining directional inputs with the six basic attack buttons. Special attacks are divided into two main styles, input and charge. Input style special attacks are performed by pressing a sequence of directions followed by an attack button. Ryu's Hadouken, or Fireball, is performed by pressing down, down forward, forward, and then any punch button. Once a player has familiarized themselves with their character's input special moves, they can execute them frequently and pressure their opponent with ease. Charge style special attacks are performed by holding a direction for one second, then pressing the opposite direction and an attack button simultaneously. Guile's Sonic Boom is performed by holding back for one second, then pressing forward and any punch button. The game allows for directional overlap when charging. For example, Guile can hold down back to prevent himself from walking backwards, and the game will still count this as both a down and a back charge, which allows him to Sonic Boom. In general, charge characters tend to be a bit more defensively oriented, since holding back or down back to charge naturally causes you to block. Though the requirement of charging may seem like a burden, charge characters generally have powerful normal attacks with excellent range and speed. This helps them out in situations where they do not have time to charge. Finally, many charge moves are somewhat difficult to deal with. Put simply, zoning is the idea of forcing your opponent to navigate a frustrating and dangerous obstacle course. Projectiles are useful when zoning, because they force your opponent to jump, which allows you to anti-air them. If the opponent jumps at you and scores a hit, they'll get a lot of damage out of it, so a big part of Street Fighter is making sure that that doesn't happen. This process is known as anti-airing. Ryu's crouching medium punch is a poor anti-air, as it hits horizontally and not vertically. His crouching hard punch, however, is excellent due to its vertical range. Which attack is best suited as an anti-air will vary based on the situation. And sometimes, it's better to meet your opponent in the air and beat their jumping attack with your own. The most powerful anti-airs are invincible special moves such as Ryu's Shoryuken or Guile's Flash Kick. These attacks are momentarily invulnerable, and if timed right, guarantee a clean victory over any jumping attack. Invincible special attacks are quite vulnerable if they miss. Punishing with a sweep or a throw is simple and effective, dealing damage and scoring a knockdown. The more damage you deal when you punish an opponent, the more they'll second-guess themselves the next time they use a risky attack. We'll go over how to do some fancier combos in part two of this guide. Make sure to use the game's built-in training mode to practice on your own. Pick a character or characters and familiarize yourself with what each different attack button does. Practice doing some special moves and use the record and playback feature to control the dummy computer and test out different scenarios. That's it for part one, the basics. Coming up in part two, we'll go over some of Street Fighter IV's intermediate aspects, combos, special canceling, EX moves, and more.